Good morning, everyone. It was wonderful to feel the energy in the room and feel the excitement of everyone here. Um, and I am delighted uh, to welcome you. Uh, for people who don't know me, my name is Mary Ann Babinski. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Law, and I have the pleasure of serving as your MC this morning. I want to take a moment to recognize some of the special guests that we have here today. John Montaldano, uh, Chair of the UDC Board of Governors, members of the UDC Board of Governors, Professor Arvind Gupta, President and Vice Chancellor, and Dr. Michelle Pereira, who have, brought, who have welcomed us to their home. It's a very special opportunity to be able to take part in an event here in your home, so thank you very much. Uh, David Farrar, uh, Provost and Vice President Academic. Robert Lee, Chancellor Emeritus and Honorary Campaign Chair for UBC's Start and Evolution Campaign. My fellow deans, senior members of the legal community, faculty and staff of the law school, and Peter Allard and members of the Allard family. We are delighted to welcome you all here today. We're here to celebrate a special announcement that will have a lasting impact on the future of the law school for generations to come. I know you're all eager to hear the announcement. I could sense that you had some excitement <laughs> a few moments ago. But first, uh, I wanted to set the stage by uh, spending just a moment talking about the law school's history. Uh, on September 6, 1945, UBC's Faculty of Law was created and soon thereafter welcomed its first class of students right here on the Point Grey campus of the University of British Columbia. It was the end of World War II and veterans who'd seen the horrors of war, the risks of governmental oppression, the catastrophic results of prejudice and discrimination returned home. They sought opportunities to share in the growth of this province, in this nation, uh, and the broader world. And they were looking for a legal system that could promote justice peace and equality here in Canada and elsewhere. People who are familiar with the story will know that our founding dean, George Curtis, and our faculty sought to ensure that UBC would contribute in substantial ways to the development of British Columbia, Canada, and the world, and sought to prepare law graduates for the many leadership roles they play in our democratic society. Uh, and they do that through their own work as, uh, as lawyers, through research, through law reform, and they contribute in so many important ways to the pursuit of justice, freedom, equality, and economic opportunity under the rule of law. Well, you have to flash forward a bit, and UBC Law will mark its 70th year this September. I think in the brief arc of its history, the law school has grown in ways that no one ever would have anticipated. From the visionaries in the huts uh, at the edge of the Point Grey campus to a leading Canadian law school recognized as one of the top 40 law schools in the world and seeking to be one of the world's great centers of legal education and research. It's been an amazing trajectory, fueled by the renewed commitment of each generation to the pursuit of justice, as well as by the deep connections between the law school and its graduates, uh, and our province and nation. So how has this happened? Well, UBC's vision has attracted students and faculty from across Canada and around the world, because as much as we know the world has changed in 70 years, and I think we can all pause and think about our own markers about those changes, about transportation, communication, uh, jobs that didn't exist, areas of laws that didn't exist, um, range of things. Uh, we still live in a world uh, that hungers, really hungers, for justice, for equality, for economic opportunity, for freedom. Of course, a few things have changed at the law school over the years as well. Um, and there was a theme for a while for the law school that we always were in buildings that we had to explain. Uh, but then, uh, three years ago, uh, we enjoyed the opening of Ellard Hall. Uh, and I have to pause, looking out at this audience, and say, uh, our school's inspiring spaces for teaching and learning and research would not have been possible without the support of so many leaders in the profession and so many graduates who stepped forward to say, well, that's one problem we can solve for the school. Uh, we're going to uh, make sure that we have a building that's befitting the students, faculty, and graduates. Uh, and so thank you very much for your help in making that happen. I'd also like to thank Peter Allard, who's here today with his family, for his historic and record-breaking gift in 2011, which allowed us to surpass the goals that we had set for that Allard Hall building project, and as well, beyond that, to establish the Allard Prize for International Integrity as a global initiative, uh, and to create uh, ways to connect the law school to the broader community and to its past, the UBC Law History Project. Peter's leadership gift to UBC Law reflects his strong belief in the enduring and transformative power of legal education. So, here we are, positioned for the next stage of the future of the law school. Today, I am delighted to share that Peter will once again make history for UBC 
through the commitment of a transformational gift of $30 million to the law school. Observation, that this is the single largest donation to UBC's Faculty of Law, and it is actually the largest donation ever to a Canadian law school. So we are thrilled. <laughs> so Peter's historic donation will bring unprecedented benefits to students and faculty, now and in the future by establishing permanent law school endowments to support the core activities of the school. And I'll spend a moment just telling you what they are. First, faculty recruitment and retention, to make sure that our students and the broader society whose work our professors uh, touch is, uh, brings to UBC some of the world's greatest uh, legal minds. Student initiatives, student support is a key focus uh, for Peter, such as entrance awards, summer employment, enhanced admissions practices, and a myriad of other ways that we can make sure that we're doing the very best to support students over the generations. And much needed student experiential learning programs. And for those of you who are aware, um, it's a very important thing for a, a school like a law school to be able to connect the learning that students do in the classroom with being able to help people in the broader world. Uh, so doing that through clinical programs or experiences where they can take their knowledge from the classroom and use it to help others. The gift will also enable the faculty to enhance its role as a champion for justice and human rights through the continuation and strengthening of the Elder Prize for International Integrity. Taken all together, in fact, Peter's previous gift and his new commitment to law total $40 million. So. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, for your significant investment in the future of this law school. At this time, I would like to invite UBC President and Vice Chancellor, Professor Arvind Gupta, to the podium to say a few words about the meaning of this gift for the university. Thank you, Marianne. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with you to celebrate such a momentous occasion in the history of our law school. On behalf of the University of British Columbia, it is my honor and pleasure to thank Peter Aller for his exceptional gift to the UBC School of Law. We are so grateful, Peter, for your foresight and unwavering commitment to the betterment of society and the pursuit of justice. At UBC, we are an ambitious place. Our faculty push to expand the edge of what is known, and our students seek challenges, both in the classroom and just as importantly, in working to make a better world. As UBC's president, I know how important visionary philanthropic endeavors are our university's capacity to realize its ambitions and to carry out excellence measured on a global scale. Our ability to advance knowledge and to contribute to our society and students depends on extraordinary commitments like the one we are celebrating today. Therefore, it's a particular and special pleasure for me to recognize Peter Aller. Peter's visionary commitment to the law school is an inspiration for all of us at UBC. Peter, your extraordinary gift will allow UBC to offer an unparalleled student experience and to nurture future leaders for generations to come. It will also fuel the law school's ability to serve as a national and global leader in legal education and research, ensuring that UBC will remain a global, via, global beacon in the continuing pursuit of justice. The university is indeed very grateful for your vision and commitment to the law school and your decision to take this leadership step in inspiring others to 
commit to the law school's future. I have to announce the gift again. Peter, <laughs> it's a great pleasure to announce that the Peter Aller $30 million gift, the largest individual donation to our $1.5 billion Start and Evolution fundraising and alumni engagement campaign. And because of this gift, I'm extremely proud to announce that the university will rename the law school the Peter A. Allard School of Law. on September 6, 1945. I have to note that we all actually are now sharing another historic moment together. January 22nd, 2015, and the announcement of both this extraordinary commitment and a new name, the Peter A. Allard School of Law. Peter, there's no words to express our gratitude uh, for your commitment to the law school's faculty and students now and in perpetuity. Your gift is a tribute to what the law school and generations of graduates have accomplished and an inspirational call to the broader UBC law community to recommit ourselves to excellence in the pursuit of justice. This special moment and the law school's new name reflect your values, your commitment, creativity, innovative spirit, and most importantly, your desire to make a difference in the future of legal education and what the Peter A. Allard School of Law is going to be able to accomplish and changing the world in generations to come. I know that we've already made two important announcements, uh, but I actually have to make one more. I hope you don't mind. Is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> you want to just get, all right, I'll do it. Uh, so we know, we know that Peter's commitment provides the foundation for this newly ambitious future. And we can all sense what this enormous investment will mean for our students, for our faculty, for the ability of the school to have real impact in our local community and the broader world. But in truth, the law school's ability to be ambitious to found new programs, to contribute to the pursuit of justice, will always depend on the willingness of each generation to recommit itself to the values and principles held by the founders of this law school. For that reason, we're excited to announce with Peter here today a campaign to raise an additional $10 million in matching funds. And we want to encourage alumni and friends to join in supporting these ambitious goals and to ensuring that we will be able to do the very best for future generations of lawyers, leaders, and public servants who come from the Peter A. Allard School of Law. You're going to hear more about this endowment campaign in the months and years ahead. Many of you in this audience will hear more about this <laughs> in the months and years ahead. Uh, but it's important to note that Peter Allard's gift is truly meant to be inspiring. It's inspiring about values. It's inspiring about what this law school has accomplished and can accomplish, and we invite you to join in this new future. With your help, we're going to be able to quadruple the law school's endowments to nearly 50 million by the end of the campaign. <laughs> and now, the moment you've actually all been waiting for, I'm delighted to introduce you to Peter A. Allard, QC. Graduates of UBC in history in 1968 and a law degree in 1971. Now, Peter. <laughs> I feel a little in shock when I heard the word 1.5 billion, so <laughs> I hope they're not looking to me, for me to. <laughs> Dear friends, family, and honored guests, it is a privilege and an honor to be here on this momentous day. 
which is the culmination of a progression of events from the naming of the UBC Law Building in September 2011 and the development and awarding of the first Allen Prize for International Integrity by the faculty in 2013. A key purpose of the Allen Prize is to establish UBC's law school internationally in terms of a vision for integrity and ethics in law, but the overarching goals of the prize are to recognize those chosen from countries around the globe for their fearless and enduring fight to make this a better world and to inspire all of us, whether lawyers or citizens, to renew our commitment to the six foundational principles recognized by the prize, courage, leadership, transparency, accountability, rule of law, and anti-corruption. Today's announcement is about the creation of several permanent endowments to support the long-term success of the faculty, to enable the faculty to establish and maintain pillars of excellence in human rights and international integrity and ethics, to build a vision, to take a leadership role, and to raise the recognition of the law school internationally. First, a student support endowment to ensure that the most promising students are able to access legal education at the faculty through scholarships or bursaries, summer employment, and otherwise, and to support best practices with respect to admissions. Second, a faculty recruitment and retention endowment to ensure that the faculty has the best and the brightest teachers and researchers from around the world. And third, a student learning endowment to ensure excellence in the programs offered by the faculty, as well as further funding for the Allard Prize itself. The creation and sustaining of wealth does not happen by accident. It involves constant risk assessment, diversity of assets, good management, faith, and in some cases, a little luck. My ability to give to the law school has occurred through a process of thinking long-term and with much diligence and cooperation and collaboration with business associates, lawyers, engineers, planners, accountants, and financial advisors, including my friends Stuart Hayashi, Jeff Lister, and Rick Wong, who are here today, and last but not least, my faithful and extremely diligent secretary, paralegal Denny Flynn, and office assistant Jane Turnbull, who have to remind me often of what day it is and where <laughs> things are. In fact, my gifts for current and future generations coming through the faculty are the result of the labors of three generations of family members working separately or together at times who, are, who have created capital for me and work with me to grow it by providing services and products and through investments. It started with my father who had vision with respect to many businesses that could be started right away and where there were opportunities to acquire assets for long-term development. My father's investments were visionary, diverse, and prudent. As my father neared his 60th birthday, his strategy and approach moved from entrepreneurial risk taking to the preservation of assets. This responsibility was entrusted to my sister Kathy, who carried out the assignment superbly. My older brother Cam and his capable and competent children, Robert Manning, who is my father's right-hand man, my nephew Rob King, and all their loyal and capable staff are the sole reason the Highbury Foundation, which will likely provide some of the gift today, has risen to many times its original funding 21 years ago. They did this through the creation of services and housing, industrial and commercial building developments over many decades, successfully and prudently to meet the needs of our burgeoning economies in Western Canada and the US. And my gifts are also the result of the tradition of giving on the part of my father, brothers and sisters, <coughs> and other family members over the past 50 years. And the powerful example set by my mother of always helping wherever she could however she could. It is with heartfelt thanks that I want all of them to know that this is very much a donation and legacy on their behalf as it is mine. It is in this context that I wish UBC's Investment Management Inc, or IMAT, which will manage the endowments, the university administration and the law school administration, faculty and students involved here today and in the future to know that these funds are given to them as a sacred trust to manage and grow prudently 
and judiciously for all the future law students and faculty so that the faculty can long endure and prosper and effect positive changes in the world. Bob Lee persistently encouraged me to take the opportunity to fund our law. <laughs> Did I underline persistently? <laughs> uh, to take the opportunity to fund the Allard Hall, telling me that I would never regret it. <laughs> Since the opening of Allard Hall, it is Dean Marianne Bobinski, Assistant Dean External Relations, Carrie Strelowski, all members of the Allard Prize Committee, its management team and students, my lawyer Jeff Lister, and my nephew Rob King, who have taken the idea of an international prize for integrity and raised it to a reality beyond anything I could possibly imagine. The faculty's dedication of its belief and energies in the vision is what drew me to this further level of commitment. The personal commitment of Marianne Babinski and Carrie Zerlaski has been truly extraordinary, and the approach and dedication of other senior university representatives, including, including Heather McGaugh, Associate Vice President of Development, has been uniformly positive, supportive, and appreciated. The monies that are being committed today are to establish one of the world's truly great law schools, in significant part by giving the law school the ability to steadfastly and rigorously advance the principles of the Allard Prize, encourage their adoption, and multiply the beneficial effects in our day-to-day -day life, and work with those in the legal community and beyond, locally, nationally, and internationally, to make a better world. I believe in the principles, I believe these principles which, which respect the concept that all human beings are of value and worthy of our energies are critical to the future success of our societies. We have the power and ability to follow the path of honesty and integrity and restore, or in many cases introduce, these principles in our institution. My desire is that now and hereafter, the Peter A. Allard School of Law use my gifts to secure its leadership role in this campaign, to move the principles of the Allard Prize forward to their concept of we versus I, and be a beacon of hope, a catalyst, and a catalyst for positive change around the world. Thank you. like your remarks at Allard Hall, they're a, a stirring uh, call for us to recognize the way in which what the law school does and what we're about uh, really is about justice and about having that impact in society. Uh, so your investment is going to fuel hopes and dreams for faculty, students, and staff at the Peter A. Allard School of Law for generations to come. Speaking of those who are to come, uh, we are, I'm now very pleased uh, to invite our Law Student Society President, Andrea Fraser, uh, to the podium. She's going to say a few words on behalf of our students. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, some gifts simply take your breath away, and this is one of them. Not only because of its amount, and not only because of the good uses to which it will surely be put, but because of the magnitude of positive change it will create for this and future generations. On behalf of the student body, I'd like to extend our heartfelt thanks to Peter Allard QC for this extraordinary gift. If it takes a village to raise a child, it most definitely takes a community to develop law students who will turn into very capable lawyers and judges. Mr. Allard is a person who has been and continues to be a leader of our community. He generously supported the building of Allard Hall. And let me take this opportunity to say thank you on behalf of the students 
for the law school's world-class home. We spent hours upon hours upon hours at Allard Hall. <laughs> the building's abundance of natural light is therefore much appreciated. It really saves us a lot of money on our vitamin D supplements. <laughs> but most importantly, Allard Hall is the home of our community. It's the place where we study, laugh, and live. And we could not ask for a better home. Yet as today's gift demonstrates, Mr. Allard's generosity continues. Once fully endowed, this gift will provide almost $1 million a year in funding forever. Students today and for generations to come will directly benefit in a number of ways. Making it through law school is not an easy task for many. Students often need financial help. We can look forward to the addition of new awards and bursaries, along with funding for student summer work experiences. The backbone of our law school community is our faculty, and I'm really happy to see many of you here today. I want to especially mention our Dean, Marianne Babinski, who has been a champion of the law school and has worked tirelessly with community leaders such as Mr. Allard during her time as Dean. As students, we will never forget the impact of the many professors who have helped shape our views of the law. Mr. Allard's gift will ensure that our community is able to attract and retain the very best. As our faculty is supported in their research, this will provide opportunities for students to participate in that research, which will prove invaluable to their future. In addition, this donation includes a significant endowment for experiential learning. And this is something that I'm particularly excited about. During my time at Allard Hall, my work at the Student Legal Clinic has shown me the value and importance of hands-on learning. Experiential learning connects the theory of law with the reality of people's lives. Dealing with real issues gives students relevant insight into people, their problems, and their needs. It also shows us the importance of using the power we have as law students and lawyers to help address those needs. Finally, this gift will ensure the continuation of the Allard Prize for International Integrity and related activities that benefit students such as internships, funding for externships, and research opportunities. The Allard Prize is a truly unique initiative, and we as students are extremely proud of our law school's role in promoting human rights and combating corruption internationally. Mr. Allard, your gift is a remarkable legacy. It will allow our community the chance to dream big and to make those dreams a reality. Ultimately, the best way to express gratitude is through action. It's my hope that as graduates of the Peter A. Allard School of Law, we go into the world and live the principles of the community that educated us. Whatever area of the law we end up practicing in, wherever we are in the world, we must remember our position of privilege and give back as Mr. Allard has so generously done. I encourage my fellow students to strive to reflect the values and goals of the Allard Prize. We must act with courage in our endeavors. We must demand transparency and accountability from government. We must fight corruption and other abuses of power. And we must defend the rule of law and always protect one of our core democratic principles, equality for all. This gift is about caring and compassion for the students. It will provide present and future students of the law with the confidence to meet these challenges. And for that, Ms. Drallard, we thank you. You are a very special person indeed. Thank you, Andrea. That was really wonderful. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, Peter Arvind and Andrea forward uh, because we're going to unveil this. I have no idea what it is. No, it sounds amazing. It's a, it's a special recognition plaque uh, that's going to be displayed in Allard Hall to commemorate this historic day. And we also have a small keepsake uh, for Peter to remember the day. So we're just going to do brief photos and then we'll be back with you. Thank you. 
All right, uh, Peter, thank you once again. Uh, you'll be thanked repeatedly. Um, your passion for justice is reflected in your support for the Alder Prize for International Integrity and the programs that will give today's students and tomorrow's graduates the skills and grounding and ethics that are essential to leadership. Your commitment to the law school creates the foundation for the law school's future growth and success and is an inspiration. I think we all feel inspired. Uh, to other alumni and friends to contribute to the continued growth of one of the world's great law schools. In closing, Peter, thank you for your passion, for your integrity, for all that you uh, do to encourage us to focus on ethics and human rights, for your vision, for your leadership in the pursuit of justice, and for your support of the students, faculty, and alumni of the Peter A. Allard School of Law. I invite everyone to enjoy, enjoy each other's company. We have refreshments. Um, and uh, for those of you who are able, uh, we'll be serving a lunch at Allard Hall uh, that uh, will be getting the formal program there at about 12.30. So thank you all for being here.